Every mountain is level. The glory of God shall then be revealed, and the nations will hear and be glad. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight a highway for God. Welcome to your cathedral. I'm Father Greg Sakowitz. A lady on a commuter train was reading a newspaper article about life and death statistics. Fascinated, she turned to the man next to her and said, did you know that every time I breathe, somebody dies? Really, he said, have you tried mouthwash? <laughs> I could hardly contain myself. Special thank you to, again, Mark Teresi and David Jonas. Beautiful, fantastic music, not only during the Advent season, but all the tapings we've been doing the last eight or nine months. Special thank you to Father Mark, producer Smolka, who puts up with my jokes. He just sits behind that camera and shakes his head, but what can I do? So Father Mar Mark, great job, continuing week in and week out. A magician worked on a cruise ship. The audience was different each week. So the magician did the same tricks over and over and over again. There's only one problem. The captain's parrot saw the shows each week and began to understand how the magician did every trick. Once he understood, the parrot started shouting in the middle of the show, look, it's not the same hat. Or look, he's hiding the flowers under the table. Or look, why are all the cards in the deck spades, ace of spades? The magician was absolutely furious, but couldn't do anything because the parrot belonged to the ship's captain. Then one stormy, terrible night in the Pacific, the ship sank. The magician luckily found himself on a piece of wood floating in the middle of the sea with, but as fate would have it, with the parrot on the same piece of floating wood. They stared at each other in absolute hatred but did not utter a word. This went on for one day, two days, three days, four days. Finally, on the fifth day, the parrot could not hold back any longer and said, okay, I give up. Where's the ship? <laughs> Amid the busyness of our lives this time of year, this Advent season, I'm tempted to ask, okay, I give up. Where is Advent going? Going by so quickly. It's important that we do not lose Advent's real meaning despite so much left to do and not enough time to do it. I realize these are COVID-19 times, but all of us are busy and stress-filled and anxious in so many different ways. Or for some of you, there's little left to do this next week the same question is raised. What's Advent's real meaning and reason for you? I was given an article some years ago by Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life and The Purpose Driven Church. The article from the magazine Guidepost was titled The Purpose Driven Christmas. In the article, he suggests three things in having a purposeful, purposeful Christ-centered Christmas. Number one, he says, Keep these days simple. We are not to overload our schedules. We are not to be consumed by the materialism all around us. Our gifts are best kept simple as expressions of how much we truly love people. Number two, be there for others. Be there for others. Especially take note of people in need of encouragement, cheering up, support. Be there for them. And thirdly, Warren says, during the season, give generously. Warren says that perhaps the most precious thing we can give others at this time of Christmas is our time. Time is a precious gift because we really never do get it back. If we invest time in one another, we've given a forever gift 
to that person. The late Joseph Cardinal Bernadine said this about a month before he died in November of 1996. I want my life to point to the way of Jesus. I want my life to point to the way of Jesus. The same could be said of John the Baptist in this weekend's third Sunday of Advent weekend. The people ask him, who are you? Why should we pay attention to you? John the Baptist says who he is not. John says, I'm not Elijah the Messiah or the Messiah, nor the prophet. Maybe we need to ask ourselves, who am I? Who are we? We are more than we are an accomplishment. And always remember, people before things. People before things. Let's approach this Advent season from another angle. The date, December 23rd, 1995. 25 years ago, I went to visit an elderly man at Regency Nursing Home on Milwaukee Avenue in Niles. I remember the date exactly because December 23rd is my mother's birthday. Mom would have been 98 this week coming up. I was racing down Milwaukee Avenue, parked the car, and raced into the nursing home. All along the way, getting to Regency Nursing Home, I kept telling myself, too much to do and not enough time before Christmas. I'm way too busy, too much to do. So I parked the car, I raced into the building, I raced down the hall, I raced in the room, too much to do, too much to do, too much in my mind. This elderly man was sitting by the window in his room, watching all the cars zoom by on Milwaukee Avenue, back and forth, back and forth, zooming by. I said, hello. The first words out of his mouth, even before he said hello to me, he said this, by looking out the window, not even looking at me, he said real loud, I wish I was busy again. I wish I was busy again. I stopped in my tracks. I'm racing like a madman with too much to do. And he calmly says, I wish I was busy again. I left the nursing home calm on the inside and thought driving back home to the rectory, first of all, God, thank you for my busyness, a gift from you, put in perspective. I thought to myself, this was back in 1995, at that point I was 42 years old. I said, if I live to 80, this gives me 38 more Advent and Christmases the rest of my life. What are 38 more Christmases over the rest of my life? Not many when you think about it. Now I'm 67 years old now. And if God blesses me to a life of 80, I'm down to 13 left over an entire lifetime of Advents and Christmases. I'm doing my best from feeling overwhelmed and keeping this Advent season and Christmas and Christmas season in perspective and to keep its real meaning in my life. A lecturer, when explaining stress management to an audience, raised a glass of water and asked, how heavy is this glass of water? Answers rang out regarding how much the glass of water happened to weigh. The lecturer replied, the absolute weight of this glass of water does not matter. It depends on how long you try to hold it. That is the key. If I hold this glass of water for a minute, not a problem. If I hold this glass of water for an hour, there'll be an ache in my right arm. If I hold this glass of water in my hand here for 24 hours, please call an ambulance. In each case, it's the very same weight, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it becomes. And he continued, and that's the way it is with stress in our lives. If we carry our burdens all the time, sooner or later, as the burden becomes increasingly heavy, we won't be able to carry on. As with a glass of water, you have to sometimes put it down and rest for a while before trying to hold it again. When we're refreshed, pick up the glass, we can carry on with our burdens also. 
but sometimes we just need to slow down and rest. So before you return home tonight, put the burden of work and life down. Don't carry it home. If many of you I know are working from home because of COVID-19, still put the burdens down. Pick up tomorrow. Pick it up tomorrow. Whatever burdens and stresses you're carrying now, let them down for a moment, if you possibly can. Relax. Pick them up later, after you've rested. Advent is meant to help us keep our perspective. The point is to focus on what is important so we can enjoy the feast of Christmas even more. Advent is not meant to take the fun out of the season, for Jesus is the reason for the season. There's an old Greek proverb, well begun is half done. Well begun is half done. This third weekend of Advent is frequently connected with joy. The old Latin imperative form of the verb is gaudaute, rejoice, rejoice Sunday. Joy is not about raucous laughter. Joy is inner peace, a sense of balance in one's life, a sense of direction, meaning, and purpose. And by the way, when you go to bed this evening, turn all your worries and stress over to God. Why? Because God will be up all night anyway. May God bless all of you. Continue joy this Advent journey. Stay healthy. And please, dear God, please, dear God, the Chicago Bears finally win a football game this weekend. Come the wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go, rejoice.